All right. Well, thank you all for joining us this kind of dreary afternoon here, at least in Northwest Indiana. I'm very excited to have some fellow Purdue uh, staff here with me today to talk to you about potential careers in animal science. Uh, I'm happy to have Barry Delks, who's the coordinator of careers career services for the Department of Animal Science and Elizabeth Byers Doton who is the who is an academic and career advisor in the department as well. You are in very wonderful and capable hands to learn all about what a potential career in animal science might look like and what some steps are to get you headed in that direction. So I am going to turn it over to them. Okay, thank you, Courtney. So welcome everyone, and I'm glad to kind of virtually see so many faces. We're gonna share our slideshow here with you. Uh, and so today, Barry and I are um, going to talk to you about launching your animal science career. Uh, if you guys do have questions at any time, please feel free to put them in the chat and we'll be watching the chat here and there. And then we also will have some time at the very end for questions as well. Uh, but we also wanted to do a quick introduction of ourselves since we aren't there in person. Uh, so this is me. I'm Elizabeth Byers Doton, like Courtney said. I grew up in West Lafayette on a dairy farm about a mile east of the Purdue Animal Science Research and Education Center, um, but decided to not go to Purdue. Wanted to spread my wings a little bit and try out a new state. So I studied ag communication at the University of Wisconsin River Falls, uh, where I participated in dairy judging and Greek life and a whole lot of other organizations. And that led me to have an internship that completely changed my career path. Uh, it introduced me to student affairs, which is what I'm doing today, um, which is why I went to UW La Crosse to get my master's in student affairs administration. And so that just shows uh, really quickly the importance of internships and how much they can really shape and mold your future and your career and everything. Uh, so currently I live in West Lafayette with my husband Casey who also works at Purdue University in the Forestry and Natural Resource Department and then he's also the head coach of the men's rugby team. I'm still involved with the, the family farm where I have some brown Swiss show cows that I like to exhibit at different shows throughout the year. I also really enjoy getting out to different county fairs and judging, um, working with some of the fellow youth that you probably know that show dairy cows. I have a cat who's perfect, uh, at least I think she is. Um, and then I also enjoy running a lot too. And so that's kind of me in a nutshell. And then we also have Barry on this call as well. Good afternoon. Glad to be here and thank you for taking the time to join us. Uh, really excited to be part of this and Elizabeth does an amazing job. So um, we look forward, we both look forward to getting to know you a little bit today and, and a lot more in the future. So my wife and I both graduated from Purdue as well as a lot of our family, including all of our children and uh, uh, daughter-in-laws did. And so we love Purdue. I love the College of Ag, I love animal sciences, and uh, that picture in the middle that shows the students lined up to talk to employer, that's my passion, is helping students get connected to employers, helping students, helping people like yourself uh, learn about your strengths and your skills and getting connected to that. So outside of students and animal sciences in the College of Ag, uh, my uh, family and faith are really important to me. I love family. I was over with a grandson and granddaughter last night and enjoy that. Uh, you can see my grandson there in the picture uh, with the John Deere hat, feeding, a, letting his dairy cow get a drink out of his milk in the morning. So uh, look forward to talking with you today. Uh, lots of exciting opportunities in animal sciences and Elizabeth and I look forward to talking. Thank you for being here. All right, talk about uh, three plan A's. Uh, just like if you were to choose three video games or three colleges to look at 
or three types of tennis shoes to look at or three types of cars or maybe uh, in 4-H, uh, maybe you've got involved in three different types of, of uh, showing activities or uh, maybe you've picked out three different calves before. So I want to talk about three plan A's for your career path. Um, we are, Elizabeth and I represent animal sciences and a good portion of our students are interested in veterinary medicine, uh, also graduate school, as well as industry. And so um, lots of times people might pick veterinary medicine because they're not aware of other careers in animal sciences. I'm guessing that might not be true for you. Since you're involved in 4-H, you might uh, have become aware of uh, salespeople in animal pharmaceuticals. You may become aware of um, uh, people that self-feed. Um, just a variety of different careers that we're gonna talk about today. But from the beginning, when we talk about careers, Elizabeth and I really like for you to think about three plan A's. Maybe that's vet school, grad school, that would be going on after your BS degree and maybe getting a master's degree, which is about two years, or a PhD, which was about four years. Or what can you do with your BS degree? After you get your BS degree in four years, um, what can you do with that? And we'll talk about that today. We also have other students that go on to medical school, as well as maybe go on back to the home farm or their own type of business. And then on the right part of your screen, you can see some of those areas, public industry, private industry, volunteering, military service. We're gonna talk about all those areas today in, as we talk about three plan A's and different careers in animal sciences. So this next bit, we have four different videos uh, where we've interviewed some of our animal science professors and alumni uh, just so you can get an inside scoop into these four different species areas. Uh, because not only, like Barry mentioned, there's a lot of different industries that you can go into. You can also focus uh, to work on a specific species as well. And so let me switch over to go to this. Sick. All right. So we have our swine industry is the first up. The United States is one of the leading producers of, of hogs um, in the world, and we're growing in that. We're exporting a lot of hogs across the world as well, and so it's an industry that is definitely growing and getting stronger. It's not just working in the barn, in the breeding barn or the farrowing house or lactation, whatever. There's tons of opportunities outside of the farm level itself that students can explore. The pigs also need genetic consultations. We always need to keep improving those um, to keep production effective and efficient. And of course, there's also the meat processing side, which a lot of people often forget about. There's the opportunity to work in, in further processed products and to add further value to pork products themselves. There's also pharmaceutical sales because the pigs are always needed to be kept healthy. We have accountants and financial planners that are very vital in the roles that, that they provide. We have to play the markets to make sure that those pigs are getting sold at proper prices and making farmers money. In a large production system, you have people that are sourcing ingredients and are sourcing supplies that are needed on a day-to-day -day basis to keep the system operating correctly. And then there's people like my role, for instance, who work with the people and make sure that all of the employees are kept happy or that the recruitment and onboarding process is done correctly. There's tons of opportunity and there's tons of different directions that an individual can go in animal science, whether it's towards a veterinary medicine career, towards a career in animal nutrition, meat science, even production managers. I think the jobs that are in demand are definitely production jobs. Those jobs that have people that are willing to get down and dirty and take care of those animals and give them the best care possible. Anytime you've got to do something that requires getting up early, being there every day, and raising livestock is a 365 um, day a year job, you've really got to be focused and you really have to be those kind of individuals and, and frankly there's not a lot of people that can do that anymore so there's a lot of opportunity out there. And there's a lot of room to move up within those barn positions. Um, if you come in as an entry level person there's a a huge ladder to climb within those systems. 
So if you're looking for a job in the barns, you'll have to be where the hogs are, which is basically follow the path of the corn. Um, but if you want to work as a geneticist or a lobbyist in Washington, D.C., um, there's a lot of jobs outside of just those locations. Um, a lot of the technical sales teams or and for feed companies or reproduction companies or genetics companies, they're also located all over the country. Um, and some of them work remotely and then travel to the locations where the hogs are. We have staff from all different backgrounds of education. We have people who have never completed high school all the way up to PhD level employees. Um, and that is something that we really pride ourselves on. We take training extremely serious, so we don't necessarily have a bias on your education. It's definitely something that we can train you to do. If you have the enthusiasm, strong work ethic and a capacity to be flexible and want to continue to learn to advance your career and personal skills, you can go anywhere and do anything you want to do in the swine industry. Okay, so just thinking of that, I uh, just want to highlight a couple, um, kind of a couple of really neat things related to the swine industry. Really, if you are interested in working with swine, we could really get you a job starting tomorrow if you wanted to. The jobs, like they mentioned in the video, really, really range from doing a lot of hands-on. Um, it could be working in a farrowing barn or it could be working with reproduction and breeding. Uh, it could be taking care of the meat animals and feeding. There's lots of hands-on opportunities related to swine. And within the state of Indiana, lots of swine related jobs as well. And so that's just something that's really cool about this species uh, is that there's jobs ranging from all different degrees, all different paths, and all different levels of hands-on experiences as well. And so we're going to now, um, whoops, sorry, go back. <laughs> uh, we're going to now watch a little bit of information about the beef industry. Students should definitely uh, look into the beef industry just because there's a very large variety of jobs. It doesn't quite have the integration uh, that we see in some of the other industries. You know, we still have a heavy cow-calf segment, um, smaller operations in this part of the world. There are larger cow operations, particularly when we go west into lands that are not suitable for row crop production. Okay, where they're really destined for grass production, and, and so we see some big herds out there. And some of those herds will attract uh, students, okay, for employment. Uh, the other phase that, that we see probably more demand for students is in the feedlot industry. I've had the opportunity to, to work out in some Texas and Kansas feed yards before in my, in my career. I've had spent some time out there and just getting to work with those producers. You know, the beef industry is still growing strong. And it takes uh, people that are trained in nutrition and and management and, and a whole host of skills. They're even hiring guys that help help some of these cattle operations that are so big and have such a wide uh, variety of people working in that system, putting people out there that teach them how to, from the business aspect, how to manage people, how to put them together, how to, how to really promote yourself. I think a secondary area is the, the service industry that, that supplies goods and services to the beef industry. There's anything from working for a land co on the animal health side to um, you know being a salesman for a product, being the scientist behind making that product. You could go ag law and there's a lot of legislative opportunities that people don't always think about where they're protecting their producers, beef, you know, any type of livestock producer. I'd say in the beef industry, there is need for vets, uh, large, just large animals in general. Um, there's not a whole lot of vets around anymore. Most of the vets we're using are getting into their 50s and 60s and they probably don't wanna bring on a whole lot of, of new clients. Um, so there's, there's definitely a demand um, for, for the large animal side. So I think a big hole in the industry that people don't maybe look at for employment is definitely kind of the meat science processing side of things. One thing on the nutrition side that vets don't have a lot of experience with that are right in the scripts are the VFDs we're facing this year uh, as far as we can't use medication in, in any rations or diets without having some type of prescription rope. Uh, that's really where a nutritionist comes in. So I, I've seen a big demand for nutritionists out there now. You know, there's still a, certainly a big need for steaks and hamburgers and everything else. So um, 
if you have your heart setting on living in Indiana, working in the beef industry can be challenging, but if, if you're willing to relocate and try something new, which I would strongly encourage, um, move west, my friends. So that was good advice from, from Ryan Millett there at the end. Ryan Millett uh, lives up in the Warsaw area. Uh, Ryan came to Purdue with a passion for the beef industry. And if you notice the cows behind him, they were dairy cows. And uh, uh, Ryan did work uh, with ABS while he was an undergrad. Um, and that's what I'll see a lots of times with our undergrads, students that are enrolled at Purdue um, and they have a passion for beef. They may work out at our beef unit, um, or they may work with a, a company that's related to beef industry like ABS. In Indiana, as Ryan Millett, there in the orange shirt from Zoetis mentioned, he said, if you're interested in the beef industry, he said, go west, young man or young lady. Um, uh, that's where most of the jobs are, out in the big um, grasslands of the west. Um, you think about Kansas and Colorado and Texas, Montana those areas where the large beef herds are in Nebraska and um, big companies are hiring folks in those areas. Um, some nice salaries from those areas, but not as many opportunities in Indiana for beef production. Um, however, uh, kind of a neat thing is today, uh, every Tuesday, Elizabeth sends out a career newsletter. Uh, uh, today, there was actually two job openings in the beef industry in her newsletter. Uh, one of those was in Iowa at a beef farm. Uh, the owners were really neat people. One of them was a, um, uh, a uh, association leader from Washington, DC. Uh, the other spouse uh, worked for Merck. And um, they were looking to hire a person right out of college to help manage the beef herd. And um, also they were looking for somebody that had a passion for rural America and wanted to be involved in Farm Bureau and wanted to learn about uh, the beef industry and grow within their farms. So there's those kind of opportunities, but many more of them are out west versus Indiana. The ones that come open in Indiana in the beef industry tend to be small farms, uh, an older couple maybe looking to retire and looking for someone to come in on the beef side. So uh, the other opportunities in the beef industry in Indiana tend to be on the sales, uh, or association and education side. Um, and of course, there are some veterinarians that uh, may be all beef or partially beef as a veterinarian um, doing some beef and mixed practice. So um, there are opportunities, but um, I'll just quote Ryan Mellon one more time. Uh, the opportunities in beef tend to be west of here uh, for, for hands-on beef. This is becoming a dairy state. We're adding cows, we're adding milk cows to the state. The Midwest is really strong uh, for dairy because of the climate, because of the proximity to population and the strong infrastructure that's in the Midwest. And also we grow a lot of the crops that dairy farms need. There are a lot of uh, different facets of the industry, so it's not just veterinary medicine, obviously. I mean, that, that's one part of it. On our farm, we find need at the production level. If you like animals, if you like dairy cows, if you like feeding cows and, you know, getting hands on with the animals, there's an absolute need for that. Reproductive physiology, you know, genetics is going to be a continually evolving and growing industry as well. Pharmaceuticals, so medicines and that. Uh, research and development, we do trial and error. The milk supplies, milking equipment techniques. Sales, we do marketing, we do corporate affairs. Working on even just crops, you know, looking at corn silage and, and haylage. Trying to advance technology. If you like tech stuff, this is a good place to be. Whether you're working for a robotics company, going out and servicing robots, to working on the different programs that go with them. And I've known kids that have grown up on dairies that go into the food service industry and working at some of the cheese plants and ice cream plants and working with different processors. Working out logistics and how do we get a milk milk that's milked here, how do we get it to a plant in North Carolina? The people that are in those jobs are aging and in the next five to ten years there will be a lot of people who are retiring and those jobs will have to be replaced. So we are going to continue to look for talented people to go into the dairy industry in all sectors. So whatever you're interested in, there are jobs that are available.
We can teach you everything you need to know about the industry. We can teach you about our products. We can teach you and make you reputable and respectable to your customers. So you don't have to know everything about that cow. You don't have to know all the diseases. You don't have to know everything about what the industry is going through. Just have a, a willingness to want to learn and try something new. Okay, so just talking about the dairy community just a little bit. Uh, dairy has a lot of really innovative jobs related to it. Genetics are becoming a really big and fun and exciting uh, area in the dairy field. Uh, so just working on those kind of constantly improving genetics, seeing what we can do to improve the cows, uh, to keep milk production steady or increase. Um, and so there's just a lot of really neat work uh, within the Midwest related to dairy jobs. And so uh, within the state of Indiana, most dairies are typically located in the northern part of the state. Uh, we're also very close to Wisconsin, which obviously has a lot of dairy farms as well, along with California. Um, and Arizona also has a lot of dairy, um, really, really large scale dairies out west too. Uh, so dairy, just a lot of really neat ways to combine interests with some hands-on animal husbandry and then tech stuff as well. Uh, so if you have any interest in doing hands-on husbandry combined with technology, this would be a great uh, species to work on. Um, there also is a need for, uh, like they mentioned in the beef video, a need for large animal veterinarians too. Uh, and that goes for dairy veterinarians. And so I know of a recent animal science alumna who graduated with her DVM, moved out to Iowa, and she's now kind of split between both beef and dairy. And that's what she does. And so she's 100% just working on those uh, large ruminant animals uh, and that's what her main day-to-day -day life is. And so those are still opportunities available out there for you. Um, sometimes the industry can be a bit difficult or a bit rough um, based off of milk prices, but that goes the same for meat prices as well. Um, but there will always be a need for milk and cheese um, and butter and yogurt. And so looking at milk consumption in the United States, even though liquid milk consumption is decreasing, the amount of milk used in the United States is actually increasing because of the solids. And so thinking about ice cream consumption is increasing, so is butter, so is yogurt and cheese. And so all of those are increasing. And so more people are eating dairy products. And so there will still be that need for those jobs as well. And so we're going to move on to learn about poultry. So when we talk about uh, the various sectors of the poultry industry, we really are talking more about um, the life production side, uh, the processing side, and then you have your various species, uh, table egg or laying hens, broilers, turkeys, and in Indiana, especially duck production as well. I like working with poultry just because it's a strong um, industry here in Indiana. Um, there's a lot more facets to it than somebody thinks of just their chicken running around their yard. I think ducks are a different animal at the end of the day in comparison to you know a lot of the, the typical birds that you see, chickens, turkeys. They, they got a different mentality, a different, you know, just all around disposition. There's so many new things coming coming along in the egg industry that uh, it's an exciting time right now to, to be part of the egg industry. The poultry industry I think has a lot of opportunities right now. When you start to really talk about the various careers, uh, I would challenge you to come up with something that you think we can't find for you within the poultry industry. You could work in a production facility, a processing plant. Farm management type opportunities. Well-being specialists. Going out working with our growers. Nutritionists that, that help formulate our rations. Pharmaceutical sales, feed sales, equipment sales. We have operators that bring in our grain. We have a very large farming operation. And we have grain uh, merchandisers up front working here to make sure that we get the quality and the price that we need for our grain. We don't have a lot of poultry centric vets. You can really get that. You can find your job, yourself a job in a heartbeat. We need uh, food science people who uh, can work in our quality uh, quality assurance lab. Uh, we're looking for a little bit of everything for the, the right people. So when we start looking across all of these sectors, I would say that there is equal opportunity across all of them when we look for jobs. 
Um, about a year ago, we had a rough estimate come out that somewhere around 50,000 jobs are available currently in the industry for students to fill. And the issue that the industry faces is trying to find people that want to participate in the industry and help fulfill those jobs um, that are currently open. As far as just the industry as a whole, I think it's a really efficient, really well-run industry. I think it's a great industry to be in. It seems very strong. Um, everybody likes to eat, is what I always say, and I don't think that's going away anytime soon. Poultry's cool. <laughs>
good news, bad news about beef industry. People in the beef industry tend to be passionate about their, their job and their career and the beef industry, but limited opportunities in Indiana. But if you're willing to move and relocate, there are a lot of a lot more opportunities on the beef side uh, out west. As we look at this slide, and if you're taking notes or you got a pencil or a pen, paper in hand, um, I want you to write down a couple couple words as I think about careers in animal sciences. Is I want you to write down diverse. Okay, there's a diversity of careers available in Purdue Animal Sciences. Um, and we'll look at some of these companies as we, as we look at this page and the, the different companies are here. The other word I want you to write down is numerous. Lots of opportunities in animal sciences. Elizabeth and I are um, compiling data from the May 2020 grads. And um, there's lots of opportunities for those graduates, even in the midst of several crises that are, are uh, uh, facing us is there still lots of opportunities for people. Uh, if you look at the swine industry, if you look at the poultry industry, uh, up here in the, the left corner of your screen, you see Covance. Um, Covance is on the science or research side. I think this year, uh, Elizabeth, correct me if I'm wrong, but somewhere around 10, 11, or 12 of our May seniors, okay, I see you're nodding yes. So somewhere around 10 to 12 of our seniors have gone to work this year alone, May graduates have gone to work for the company Covance. Look that up on your computer screen and look at their website uh, for Covance. But over the last 10 years, Covance has hired probably well over 50 of our graduates in the last 10 years, maybe closer to 100 than 50. It's a, it's a lot of seniors that have gone to work at Covance. A company similar to Covance you can see at the bottom of your screen, Indigo. And there's a, uh, another company uh, that's in Evansville area, as well as West Lafayette, is BASI, which has been renamed, and I'm forgetting the name of that company right now. But those companies are all doing research on animal pharmaceuticals, okay? So if you have an interest in animal health, and you have an interest in animal pharmaceuticals, and you have an interest in research, Lots of opportunities at the BS level. And as we look at these other logos of companies, we haven't mentioned the packing industry. You see Indiana Packers there. Other companies like that uh, on this screen, you also see JBS, the big bright red letters there on your left. Very large packing industry. Cargill is one of the leaders in protein in the United States and the world. Very large uh, a packing industry. And what do I mean by packing is they're harvesting animals and they're processing that meat in order to sell that meat at grocery stores. So uh, these companies uh, have lots of opportunities at high salary. So if you're interested in the meat industry, the Indiana Packers, JBS, Cargill, those all have lots of opportunities at, at very nice high salary starting out. And then you can see some of the other companies. We haven't talked much about sales or pharmaceutical sales or feed sales. That would be Zoetis on your right, top right, Elanco. Um, uh, excuse me, Lando Lakes Feed, Purina, um, ADM. Those folks are, are in sales related careers and um, uh, do a lot of, if you like have people skills, you like communication, you like calling on people, you may uh, enjoy calling on veterinarians or calling on producers, um, talking with people, lots of opportunities. And throughout those films that we just watched, you saw that there are opportunities from hands-on to products, to production, to sales, to research. So two words I want you to think about when you think about Purdue Animal Sciences and think about careers is there's a lot of diversity, okay? Lots of companies and lots of opportunities and that there's numerous jobs, lots of opportunities out there. So be encouraged about their careers and be encouraged that there's a lot of other opportunities other than just vet medicine. Vet medicine is an exciting career and people love doing it, but there's a lot of other opportunities in companies as well. Okay, Elizabeth. Okay, and so I just wanted to give you a, a kind of a visual 
of what Barry just talked about. So this is from a conference that I went to in um, February. And so a lot of species have their own conferences. I saw some folks in the chat say that they're interested in equine and horses. Um, I know that the equine industry also has their own uh, conference as well. And so some people uh, will highlight um, their research at those different equine related conferences. I know there was one, I think it was last, either last summer or the summer before the national or the international equine conference was in Australia. So each species typically has their own um, different conferences that you can go to and network and learn about new research. And so this is just an example from a conference that I went to in February. Um, these, and so it was, I think, around, it was a very small kind of conference. It was more of a leadership conference. And these were all of the different job titles of people that are working just with dairy. And so there's a lot of different options out there. Uh, a lot of different uh, options depending on which species, you know, we could have a slide like this for every single species that you're interested in. And so we just wanted to visually show you um, how diverse the different career opportunities are. I'd really appreciate what Elizabeth just said there is, is once she gave you an example of the dairy industry, which she has a passion for, being a former dairy girl, grew up on a dairy farm, but she said she could show you a slide like that for every species. That's what's cool and exciting about animal sciences is there are that many different career opportunities in every species and not just livestock. There's a lot of different opportunities as you look at those other species. Um, I think, yes, Elizabeth's gonna talk about salaries in a little bit and we need to point out there is a big difference in salaries by species. Not all salaries are the same, whether it's poultry, swine, beef, dairy, or companion animal or exotic animal. Um, Elizabeth will talk about salaries and it's important to know there is a difference. But here we're, we're meeting Gabby Nelson, really awesome young lady. Uh, I remember when she was here as an undergraduate. Um, let's look at her quote. I thought veterinary medicine was the only career path in animal sciences. That is so true of mo most people coming into Purdue Animal Sciences, okay? She was typical, thinking it's the only career path is, is vet medicine. Um, she said, I thought it was the only career path in animal sciences to serve and help others. So that's two of her values she wanted to do. I'm so grateful that I stepped out of this mindset and pursued a career in research where I'm able to develop new pharmaceutical products for patients, both animal and human. So, Gabby thought she wanted to be a veterinarian. She had the opportunity to go to work. Uh, her first employer was Eli Lilly in Indianapolis. And she was working for Eli Lilly. At that time, there was a company called Elanco. If you look at the letters of Elanco, E-L-A-N-C-O, that's Eli Lilly and Company. Okay, that was the, the animal pharmaceutical side uh, there in Greenfield, Indiana. Elanco has become its own company now. It's no longer owned by Eli Lilly, but Gabby went to work for Eli Lilly. And then because of her interest on the animal side, she had the opportunity to go into pharmaceutical research with Elanco and she loves it. Um, she has received a couple of promotions since she's been there. She makes a very nice salary. Um, she loves what she's doing. And if you look at that last sentence, I'm able to develop new pharmaceutical products for patients, both animal and human. That's very rewarding to Gabby. She really loves what she's doing. And it's exciting to her to be helping both human and animals. And as a student, uh, at the end, you're gonna get to see Elizabeth and my email and contact information. Um, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to us and say, you know, I'm really interested in this species or this career or this company. And we'll do our best to get you connected to someone out in the state that might be helpful to you as you explore careers. But Gabby Nelson is just one example out of most senior classes um, are about 100 seniors uh, plus. And um, she's just one example of somebody that went out and found an, a career that she didn't even know about. And I would, I would guess that she didn't even know about this job. As I recall her exploring careers, I don't think she knew about this job even her senior year. 
Um, so I, I commend you for being a part of this program and as, a, as being a, a, a person still in high school is that you're beginning to think about careers now. So uh, good job, congratulations for doing that. Okay, Elizabeth. Okay, so this page, we just wanted to highlight some of the numbers for you. And we've had a couple more people kind of pop up in the chat. Uh, so it looks like it's split between beef and swine, equine, dairy, and then a couple wildlife animal interests as well. Uh, and so I will probably talk about those each different species in relation to salaries uh, on this page. And so on here, uh, we just wanted to include the average starting salary for bachelor's, master's, which is two years post-graduation, PhD, which is typically between four and five years post-BS, and then we also have DVM, which is four years post-bachelor's. And so the average starting salary for a bachelor's degree, when you combine all of our different areas, is in the upper 30,000s. And so this really strongly varies by concentration. And so I'll talk about um, the differences between the products and production and the animal behavior and wildlife areas. And so typically our students that go, that have a strong interest in wildlife and exotic animals, um, they are going to go work for nonprofits. And so that could be, I'll use the Indianapolis Zoo as an example. And so they are a nonprofit organization. So typically their starting salaries are gonna be very low um, in the 20,000 area. Uh, and so those salaries are low, but the people that work for those zoos and different wildlife organizations absolutely love their jobs. They're very happy. They're involved with wildlife animals. They're keeping wildlife animals happy and healthy. And so that's one thing that uh, is really, really interesting. But then when you get up into the products areas, the salaries start to increase a little bit into the 50,000s. And so it really, really varies depending on what industry area you want to go. Uh, like Barry mentioned, we have a, usually around 100 to 150 graduates per academic year. Uh, and it really just varies by the specific species and industry that they go into. Uh, we also wanted to include the average debt on here, not to scare, um, but we just wanted to be you to be aware uh, because I remember when I was in high school, debt to me, I was like, whatever, like I don't really need to pay attention to debt. That's not really a thing that I'm interested in, but it can be um, a bit surprising when you think about a career path uh, and the price tag associated with that career path. Uh, so we can see on here that we have the bachelor's and um, average starting salary and then the average debt as well. And so that's for Purdue students. Uh, then it goes up, your salary goes up by master's and then it goes up by a little bit for your debt. Um, PhD, it also goes up, uh, your salary significantly goes up along with the debt a little bit. And then DVM starting salary is in the 80,000s, just like PhD levels. Um, but those debt levels for DVM programs typically are pretty high. Um, and so, like I said, I don't, we don't want to tell you this information to scare you. We just want to be open and honest with you so you can see um, what this consists of. One thought. You mind if I share, Elizabeth? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had the opportunity to travel with Dr. Mark Russell, uh, very much involved in the equine industry for decades. And we would go to Lexington, Kentucky every year. And um, uh, I don't know how many, uh, Elizabeth mentioned several of you were interested in the equine industry. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, one thing I learned is beautiful farms, beautiful horses. Lexington is a gorgeous town. Um, but I did learn that typically, with, even with a BS degree, the opportunities in the equine industry are limited and then they're low pay and long hours, often seven days a week and maybe 10 or 12 hour days. So those are things that you gotta think about what do you want your life to look like mm -hmm. uh, after you get out of school? You wanna be working 40 hours a week or 80 hours a week. And so those are things that you can think about. But um, just wanted to share that about the equine industry. Awesome industry, cool people, beautiful horses, 
but long hours and low pay tends to be the the norm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, I like it. We, you know, Barry is just telling you that just so you are aware of it. So you can think of, um, you know, what are your values, which I'm going to share a worksheet here um, for all of you to work on kind of on your own at the end. And just think about your values. You know, are you, do you want to work on the weekends? Do you want to work outside? Would you like to be in a lab? Do you want to work with people? Um, you know, what are some of those values? And that can be stuff that can help you decide which career path you're interested in going towards. Um, and so now um, Courtney sent this out in an email yesterday, I believe yesterday. Um, and this is just some information that we want you guys to get brainstorming a little bit. And so get a piece of paper or something to write with, text it on your phone. Um, think about the work experiences that you've had. Um, I'll use myself as an example. I never had a paid work position until I was in college because I was working on our family farm. Uh, and so I, you know, I had to help dad milk the cows. I helped dad feed the calves, you know, shovel manure, clean pens. And, and that was my job in exchange for room and board or, um, you know, school and clothes and gas. And so that's part of being a farm kid. And so don't discount that. You learn a lot of really awesome skills by working on a farm, or maybe you work in, you volunteer at a vet clinic, or you volunteer at the Humane Society, or you're involved in some sort of club or organization. You know, think about all of those different activities that you're involved in, and more than likely, you have a skill that you've learned from those. And so I gave some examples down there in the left corner. You know, 4-H, I think one of, when I think back to 4-H, one of the skills that I learned was time management. You know, if you're going to be working in the food service industry, most likely you'll be working in a team. Uh, if you had a history class, you might have had a group project. What did you learn about yourself on that group project? And so I just want you to get thinking about all of those skills, all of those awesome skills that you already have. Uh, and then continue to brainstorm about three skills that you want to use. Do you already have those skills? If not, what are they? And let's do some research so we can see how we can start to develop those. Um, you can also think about hobbies that you enjoy. And so going back to the equine area, uh, this is something that I talk with students a lot about is the fact that the really cool thing with animals is that animals can also be a hobby that make you some side money, that make you some money on the side. And so, you know, do you want to work with equine? Do you want to have your own little side training facility? Um, do you want to raise show pigs on the side? Do you want to have a couple goats and you make um, some goat products that you can sell at farmer's markets? So think about those different hobbies that you might enjoy. It's also really important that you acknowledge what you dislike. And so maybe you don't like working with um, in an office. You don't like being, uh, you know, walls on all four sides. Acknowledge that. There's lots of really cool jobs out there that you can use those um, active or that you can avoid those activities that you dislike. And then we mentioned this in the previous slide, but think about your values. You know, you want to work outside. You want to work with people. And so a really common thing uh, that I hear from pre-vet students is that they don't want to work with people at all. And so just a friendly reminder is that most pets usually have a human attached to them on the other side. Um, most pets, most farm animals um, have a human attached to them on the other side. And so you still will be working with people, um, but think about what level of people you want to work with. And so those are just some examples in the chat. I'm going to put, um, let me pull up a file here. <clears throat> just a second, everyone, sorry. That's a career exploration sheet. Uh, and so in there, that's a, just a really cool career exploration worksheet that you can pull up, work on your own time, um, brainstorm a little bit, share it with an adult or um, you could share it with Barry and I, and we can brainstorm about careers too, or Courtney. Um, and that just helps you, you know, get thinking about which industry you might be interested in working with. Anything to add, Barry? Um, 
No, that, that was well said. And it, it's so important to think through this. Mm -hmm. The more time Elizabeth took time to, to write this out, um, after this meeting, spend another 15, 20, 30 minutes uh, uh, working on these questions and writing down answers. And then uh, read your answers to someone in your family or someone that you trust in 4-H or a FFA teacher or a friend or a neighbor, someone you really trust and get their opinion on your answers because mm -hmm. asking other people about these answers can help you take the next step. Like, mm -hmm. what is your next best step? Is it volunteering somewhere this summer? Is it going down the neighbor's house and helping? Is it getting a job at the vet clinic? You know, what can you do next to learn more about careers? Because in a short period of time, you're gonna be out of high school and in college, and the more work you can get now, the better you're gonna know what you wanna study when you come to Purdue. And I hope you come to Purdue. You may go to someplace else, but wherever you go to college, you know, what do you want to study? And work often helps you figure that out. So yeah. just encourage you to spend some more time on this great worksheet. And it's going to help you grow and it's going to help you think about what's your next step uh, in planning for college and the careers. Um, the last thing I want to share is just saying that uh, we do hope that uh, Elizabeth and I will get to see you someday as Purdue Animal Science students. But if we don't, we're glad that you're in Indiana. We're glad that you're in 4-H. We're glad that you're in agriculture. Um, and we're here for you. Uh, and uh, we're here to help people make good career decisions. If you do come to Purdue uh, and study in animal sciences, you'll get to know uh, Elizabeth and I through classes we teach, through career services, through career fairs, and that kind of thing. And the neat thing at Purdue is there's different levels of career services. If you start at the top, you see Center for Career Opportunities. That is a campus-wide resource center that's rated nationally as a really good resource center to help people with their career planning and career resources. So uh, you can see they help with interviews and job shadows and career planning. So that's a really neat resource with good people. I still ask them questions weekly. I sent two emails to them this week asking them questions. So great, great resource. College of Ag, that's another level of resources at Purdue in the career area. Sherry Meyer is a, a great lady who works very hard at putting on, I think it's the second largest, yeah, number two, Elizabeth saying number two, second largest career fair in the United States. So we've got a great career fair in the College of Ag. Sherry Meyer leads that. And um, it's the second largest in the United States. So we have a lot, that means there's a lot of employers there by being the second largest and a lot of students attend that. And then the next level is at the department level. If you come into animal sciences in one of the areas that we talked about, and there are more by the way, that's all Elizabeth and I could share in this short period of time. There are more careers than what we shared. But if you come in animal sciences, Elizabeth and I are here to help you learn about careers, to help you get jobs down at the vet school or in a professor's lab or out of our animal science research and education center. We have farms for every species that you could work at and we try to help get you connected to them as well as internship and full-time opportunities. And, and as I mentioned, Elizabeth and I both teach classes that help you in that process. Elizabeth teaches a freshman orientation class and has a cool, uh, freshman industry tour where you go out and you visit farms and industry and do cool stuff and meet alumni and have a dinner with alumni. And that next header underneath animal sciences says networking socials. We like to network. We like to meet people. We like to meet alumni. Just like your host today is Courtney. Courtney was an animal science alum and she, she knows so many people within extension and within ADM and within the the state of Indiana, we'd like to get you connected to good people like that. So company tables, career fairs and classes are all opportunities that um, we use to get you connected in uh, uh, what's really neat in the College of Ag and in Animal Sciences is we've got really loyal alumni that would consider you family. They would consider you family and they would serve you and help you get a job, help you get connected to a company 
and, and be helpful to you. And Elizabeth and I love helping people get connected to those great people. So at this time, uh, you know, we'll entertain any questions. Um, please take a picture of this slide so you guys can have our email address. Um, I know we both love to talk to students. We love to help people kind of find that passion and everything. And so even if you aren't, you know, if you're a freshman or an eighth grader or a sophomore, uh, if you're still early in your career path, let's get, let's, it's never too early. Um, to get thinking. And so if you guys have any questions right now, if you want to put them in the chat, uh, I'd be happy to read them off to us. Uh, and so we'll just kind of hang out and wait for if you guys have any questions at all. Yeah, so please put a question in the chat. And Elizabeth and I have a few minutes left. We'd love to answer any questions you might have about careers or animal sciences or anything that we said. Put a question there in the chat and we'll respond. I feel like I should have planned some like elevator music or something. Yeah. Well, while they while they think of their questions, <laughs> I'm going to put a link to a survey for today's presentation. We just kind of like to check in and see who who's tuning in and we share that with your county educators as well so that they can have a good feel. Uh, but definitely um, would love for you to fill that out for us if you have an opportunity. And like they said, this is this is your presentation, so ask away. It's not very often you you get that opportunity, so feel feel free to dive right in. All right, so we've got a couple questions. The first one are what are some things that would make you stand out for animal science applications? And so the big thing to remember is that Purdue in general will look at your application as a whole. They're gonna look at your, um, your college, or not college, your high school classes. Uh, they're gonna look at your either SAT or ACT scores. Uh, they're gonna look at your level of involvement, so clubs, organizations. Um, they also typically like for you to have some sort of volunteer experience in the community, giving back to your community. And then you also have typically have an essay of some sort as well. And so they're gonna look at that comprehensively. Uh, there isn't like a specific GPA you should strive for. There isn't a specific SAT or ACT score you can strive for. It's gonna be, so I would say, don't take like super easy peasy classes. You know, challenge yourself a little bit, um, but you know, maintain a solid GPA uh, be involved in something, uh, you know, one or two clubs, uh, be giving back to your community. Those types of things are what really can help you stand out. Yeah, I might just add to that is do very well in classes. Learn how to study hard now. Yes. And the better you do in classes, the better that's going to look on your admissions application. Um, so just do your best you can on, mm -hmm. on your, your coursework. And then all those other factors Elizabeth mentioned are awesome. So um, yeah, get involved, but, but work hard and learn how to study. Um, yeah. Learning how to uh, manage your time and study for tests and knock it out of the ballpark. Do well on your, your homework and your tests and your exams and do well in class. Uh, next question is, would FFA advisor and ag teacher be tied together? Yes, um, I think they're the same person in all schools. So yes, um, what is the best way to experience, oh wait, sorry. What's the best way to find experience opportunities during high school? Mm -hmm. um, so volunteering uh, with you, so with 4-H, you know, join your junior leaders. Uh, if your 4-H club does different, like ours, we did different fundraisers to, raise um, food for the local food pantries. We collected pop tabs for Ronald McDonald House. Um, be involved, become a leader in one of those organizations if you want to, like your 4-H club. Um, a lot of high schools have a lot of really awesome clubs too. Um, I think most high schools, kind of depending on size, I went to a relatively large high school, uh, so there was lots of different opportunities available. 
Um, so that's that's kind of what stands out to me. Barry, anything that you can think of? Yeah, just to piggyback on what Elizabeth just said, I, I hope you'll write this down. 4-H and FFA, at this time of your life, it's a great place to get experience. We actually have employers that say, I'm looking for a, listen to this, a good 4-H or FFA kid. Why is that? Because if you're involved in 4-H and FFA, and I mean involved, not just showing up, but you get involved in leadership, you're, you're showing animals, you're participating, you're gonna gain skills working with livestock, you're gonna gain leadership skills. So a great place to get animal experience and leadership experience right now when you may not be able to get a job, you can talk to your 4-H leader in your county and you can talk to your FFA advisor and say, what can I do to volunteer someplace? And I bet you your 4-H and FFA leader can point you someplace that you can volunteer. Another question is what colleges have degrees dealing with the equine sciences? Uh, personally, I don't know off the top of my head, but a, a solid Google will probably give you a list. I know at Purdue, at least, we have a couple of different equine classes. Uh, we do have an, you, every student's required to take a management class of some sort. And we have an equine management course that you can take. Uh, there's, I think, either two or three equine focused study abroad trips through the College of Agriculture. Uh, and then we also have, um, I'm trying to remember what, the, what it's called, but there's another equine class that you can take. Uh, it's like the, the history uh, and importance of equine, of horses in our culture. There it is, sorry, got there. Um, so that's Purdue at least, but yeah, if you, um, just Google per, or like equine science degree, you'll get a lot of really good information on there. Two close ones, uh, right down by Terre Haute is St. Mary the Woods, oh, I believe yep. it is, has a very mm -hmm. strong equine program. Um, we've had students transfer from there to Purdue for a variety of reasons, but it is a very strong equine program there at St. Mary. And then of course, University of Kentucky uh, within the animal science department. And then look up this organization, K-E-M-I, Kimmy, K-E-M-I. I don't think you can participate in Kimmy until you're enrolled in college. I don't know, Elizabeth, if that's true. I think I that's think. true, yeah. Okay. But a cool organization to be looking at is K-E-M-I, Kimmy, Kentucky Equine Management Internship Program, uh, located in Lexington, Kentucky. Check it out. Yep, yep, really cool. They have a really, really neat internship program, yeah. Okay. Um, can you share some information about the sheep industry, please? So, uh, Barry? <laughs> um, I had the opportunity about 20 years ago uh, to go to Australia. And if you want to be in the sheep industry, go to Australia. <laughs> go out west like we talked about the beef industry. But on that farm in Australia, I think, this is from 20 years ago, I think the guy had 30,000 acres and 18,000 head of sheep. And he did all that work by himself with a sheep dog. And so there's not a lot of production, economical production facilities in Indiana and in the Midwest because you need to have a lot of acres with a lot of sheep to make money. And so uh, there are some facilities out West that do that, but there's not a lot. Um, there are opportunities uh, in the meat uh, niche uh, niche meat industries with sheep um, and there's some research opportunities with sheep but not a lot of opportunities just because of economics uh, but at Purdue if you haven't met him already google Dr. Mike Neary N-E-A-R-Y N-E-A-R-Y and he's our sheep specialist he loves it we also have a sheep farm uh, associated with Purdue Animal Sciences so look up ASREC Animal Science Research and Education Center, and there's a sheep farm at our Purdue Farms. Yep. Okay. Um, so as I have done more and more classes and gotten further into 4-H, I have gotten more and more interested in genetics. What are some steps I should take to get more involved in this career pathway? Um, some of the ones I can think of is once you get to Purdue, we have some pro professors in the animal science department that are doing 
awesome research in the genetics field. Uh, so I would say, you know, when you get to campus, you can become an undergraduate researcher in one of their departments. That would be great. That would be allow you um, to go to maybe some of those conferences that I mentioned uh, that could allow you to present your research to other students at Purdue University. Um, you'd be able to get kind of hands-on experience doing genetics research. Uh, so that's one of the first things that comes to mind um, to be thinking about a career path in the genetics area. Yep. Couple companies that come to mind. Uh, it, well, or industries, swine industry and poultry industry, big time in genetics, and all species are. But uh, Maple Leaf Farms, you saw Zach Tucker on there. Uh, they've got two people working in genetics research up at Maple Leaf Farms. Uh, we saw Casey Sheldon at that time representing Belstrom Milling. They're really big time in swine genetics. Uh, look at our professors, Google Animal Science professors, Dr. Alan Schinkel, Dr. Donna Lofgren. And, um, Dr. Uh, Brito. Dr. Pardon me? Dr. Brito. Yeah. So, so we have several professors that are doing research in that genetics area. A couple companies you might look up. Uh, ABS, Select Sires, uh, GenX, J, excuse me, G-E-N-E-X. Um, there's a lot of companies that are doing genetic type research. So again, as Elizabeth said, Google that. Um, but we do have three or four faculty that are, are doing research in that area. It's really and really cool stuff. <laughs> yeah. Um, another question. Is it possible to visit the campus in person yet to find more about animal sciences? Not yet. Um, we don't have a date yet for when we'll be back open for visitors uh, for visiting students. Um, but I would guess sometime this fall. Uh, you can still schedule a meeting. Um, and you would be able to meet with either an animal science faculty member or a staff member. And then we do virtual tours as well right now, um, but we're unable to meet uh, in person quite yet. Um, how would I get connected with livestock conferences? Uh, so the one I mentioned uh, was, I, so my, you'll find a lot of my information is about dairy um, because that's just what I know and love. Um, they, uh, so a lot of the student organizations within Purdue and the College of Ag and Animal Science Department, they will typically have a different conference that they'll go to. Um, so I know uh, like Ag Communicators of Tomorrow, they have a specific conference that they go to every year. Um, the Meat Science Club, they go to the Reciprocal RMC, Reciprocal Meats Conference every summer. The Dairy Club goes to the American Dairy Association Conference every winter. Um, and so a lot of those clubs and organizations go on some sort of really neat trip. Um, and then there's also AFA, uh, which is the Ag Future of America, awesome leadership organization to become a part of. And so this, they have a conference every, was it November, Barry? Yeah. I think it's November. Um, out in Kansas City, great networking opportunities, great all, companies from all over the United States are there that specifically are looking for College of Agriculture students. You'll have other College of Agricultures there from all the different states. And so that's um, kind of the different conferences that I know of. Barry, do you know of any other ones? Yeah, the other thing, um, again, I, Elizabeth thinks like a young person, she says Google it, but <laughs> Google it, look up, look up each species, like Indiana Pork Producers, Indiana Beef mm -hmm. Cattle Association, Indiana Dairy Association, each species has an association. And mm -hmm. I just had a student last week that took part in uh, a training for students with the Indiana Pork Producers. Uh, last year I spoke at NSR, National Swine Registry, where they did training for students. So a lot of the species associations do a lot of training so check that out mm -hmm. good question all right what's your number one advice for getting into animal sciences do you have a number one advice tip barry uh work hard yeah. as a student 
work hard as a student, be a good citizen at your, at your mm -hmm. high school, um, get involved in 4-H and FFA. Those are two awesome experiences in high school that will pave your way to one, no, maybe 50% of our students that are in animal sciences, when you come, you're already involved in 4-H. You're gonna know a lot of people when you come to animal sciences just because you're in 4-H. Mm -hmm. the, the people in your local surrounding counties, you're gonna know some of them when you come up here. So work hard as a student, get involved in 4-H and FFA. That is a great start to getting ready for animal sciences. Yep, I would say get involved, um, become a leader. It doesn't have to be president. It doesn't have to be vice president. It could be the leader of a committee, you know, the, the philanthropy committee or the um, fundraising committee. You know, I would say get involved um, because those skills that you'll learn, you know, leadership, teamwork, time management, those you will use a lot of those while you're at Purdue too. Are there any animal science careers that you could use a biology degree with? Mm. Yes. Uh, the big difference uh, between those two majors is if you're looking for hands-on animal experience, the only major you'll be able to get that with is by studying animal sciences. Um, you'll still, in biology, you'll have a really awesome foundation of biological sciences knowledge but you won't have a lot of that hands-on animal experience. Um, but you would, you know, you'd be able, like thinking about vet school, you can be any major in the world. And as long as you have the prerequisites for vet school done, you can still apply to go to vet school and everything. And so um, kind of, Barry, can you think of like maybe top careers or anything? Yeah, uh, Elizabeth said it well, um, the, the major differences. So uh, major careers, um, I think when I think of biology, uh, if, if you're pursuing a career out of biology, uh, oftentimes, oftentimes, a person with a BS degree in biology is looking to do something else, maybe going to grad yeah. school or science or apply to vet school or even uh, some other type of continuing education. So I think Elizabeth said it best is, what do you want to do afterwards? Do you want to do hands-on animals as an undergrad? Or are you more interested in the micro side, the, the microscopic side, the biology side, which is the smaller level? So biology thinks small, uh, animal sciences think hands-on large animal. But even within animal sciences, um, I think that Dr. Paul Ebner, look up, if you're interested in biology, look up Dr. Paul Ebner, E-B-N-E-R. He's doing a lot of neat research, and I think you would be interested in it if you're interested in biology. Um, so uh, somebody asked for information about dairy goats and llamas mm. in terms of careers. I can't think of very many. Um, I think those are kind of going back to that hobby conversation that we had. Um, in terms of dairy goats, there's, I know there's a place in Southern Indiana cause I just drove past the billboard, um, where they've made a really, really neat agro tourism thing um so that could be something that you could do with the the goat side because like they're selling goat milk um goat cheeses uh they're doing um i'm trying to think they're also doing like uh, goat soaps and stuff like that too so a lot of really neat stuff in those areas can you think of any kind of llama or goat stuff I, I, I'm going to just agree with Elizabeth again. She's a wise lady, guys, so you need to listen to her. <laughs> is is um, uh, We really need to think about careers versus hobbies. And, and probably if you're working with llamas or sheep, you know, on your mm -hmm. farm right now, it's probably a family hobby that you're loving it and you're enjoying it and you're doing it in 4-H. And that's awesome. Um, but somebody's got to make enough money to be able to buy that property or that barn or the animals and feed them. And so oftentimes think about what's another career that's animal related or another species that's animal related that I could really love. And I could make enough money that I could buy a barn and, a, and some acres and some llamas or sheep for my kids or for me, you know, that I want to do that. So 
Uh, there's a neat gentleman in our, our department, Dr. Marcos Fernandez. Um, he's a goat man. And you can look him up on our website too, Dr. Marcos Fernandez. Uh, I think he's the faculty advisor for the goat club. Yep. Yeah. And like other, you know, all species need a nutritionist of some sort. Um, so you could always look into doing nutrition. Um, all species have some sort of sales component to them as well. Um, so you could always look into doing something like that as well. Um, and then um, it looks like last question is what's the best way um, to find what specific field you want to go into? I wish I had a magical wand and could just wave it because um, then, you know, it could tell us um, that it's, I would say exploring your options. Um, staying open, kind of like like what I did. I was dead set on moving back to Indiana, working for Milk Promotion Services of Indiana. I was going to be a farmer relations manager. Like that's what I was going to do. And I had an internship that completely changed that career path. And so I think that's um, one thing that I would encourage you to do is to stay open. Yeah. And what I would say is work. Work now at whatever age you're at. Volunteer, work, get work on farms, get work at the vet clinic, work on your farm, go down the neighbor's house. Any place you can work, you're going to learn about people and hopefully you're going to learn about animals. And the more you work, you're going to learn about the things that you like and that you dislike. And so uh, as you pursue that career, the more you know your likes and dislikes, and I'm going to plant a seed in your mind, think about taking the strength finders test. And if you don't take it, you'll take it as a freshman when you come to Purdue, but it helps you identify your strengths. And so you want to pursue a career where you're using your strengths. So maybe look at strength finders. But the, for me, the best thing I did was work because just like Elizabeth, when I did an internship, uh, my, my senior year in college, it changed my career path from pure agriculture to student services within agriculture. Mm -hmm. So the internship, the work experience is what changed me. And so I encourage you to work, 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 and you're going to learn lots of things about yourself and about careers. Okay, guys. So I think that's about it as far as I can tell. Um, so I'll just say a, a quick thank you. Thank you so much for joining with us this afternoon. Um, hopefully the rain has lifted. If you are in north central Indiana. I think it's, at least it sounds like it has here. Um, but again, please reach out to myself or Barry if you have any future questions or want to talk and brainstorm. Thank you. It was good uh, being with you today. Feel free to email Elizabeth or myself. We look forward to meeting you in the future in person, yep. on campus, in our building, in the Lando Lakes Pavilion. It's a livestock pavilion. Uh, we hope we see you next summer where Courtney will uh, invite you to campus and we won't be zooming next year. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yes. Thank you very much. And uh, make sure you check out the virtual 4-H Academy this week for not only animal science sessions um, and information, but also lots of other great uh, career, potential career interest information from all over Purdue's campus. So thank you again and be well. And we hope to see you all in person real soon.